Hello, and welcome to Culture Shock. I'm Evan, and this is... Brent. Well, what are we talking about today, Brent? We're talking about pachinko machines. Pachinko machines? These things, yeah. Oh, wow. You may have seen these. It's like a pinball machine had cross crossbred with a, with a slot machine. It is. <laughs> That's exactly what it is, actually. <laughs> so you fire your uh, these little metal balls up into this mechanism here, and they hit all of these wonderful little... Um, nails and bounce all over the place and you'll notice there are these little slots in there and you're trying to get the balls into those slots so those are kind of payouts Ooh, the machine yeah. a win a bell goes off exactly this is kind Amazing. of a noisy machine here it is it is so you can imagine what it's like in what's called the pachinko parlor where they have dozens or hundreds of these machines in rows running the length of a building Oh my goodness, that's tight spacing, just enough to sit by. You have a whole row of those. Ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Now, this is a rather old one. Mm -hmm. I'm sure the this is probably uh, circa 1970. The mm. newer ones are have more bells and lights and whistles and just electronics. Like, just like pinball machines. Yep, they've oh, got all wow. electronics, um, lights flashing, and even video screens in there. Ooh. And this gets to kind of our anime connection is that uh, one of the big things for a popular anime series is to release an anime-themed pachinko machine themed around that show. Oh, so wow. you can play a Persona 4 pachinko machine, Evangelion pachinko machine. You name it, if it's popular, it has a pachinko machine. Do they put special special uh, payouts on these machines? Oh, yes, they do. Oh. So not only will they have these video screens, as you play, you can hit special modes. And those modes can trigger special animations. And the special animations might be original to the machine. Oh, wow. So you might see something nobody else ever gets a chance to. Yeah, exactly. That, that's a good motivation to keep playing. <laughs> it uh, sure thurr, thurr, thurr. And... I gotta hit that one again. <laughs> Captain Gatsuragi, I have not <laughs> seen her like that. <laughs> and oddly enough, you have to pay for it. Oh, you know? uh, well, there's a, there's always that. You, always you, you got to pay to play. So, <laughs> so, so this this machine uses little metal balls. Yeah. And there they are. There are none in there, but they're up here. <laughs> so you put your balls in on the top, mm -hmm. and when you win, you get them back. Yeah. Kind of like a slot machine. Mm-hmm. And when you don't win, you don't get them back. Exactly. Yeah. So the, the, the balls come out, and you'll notice on there, there's a little engraving on there, a little S. Hmm. Um, all the balls are engraved because you can't remove a ball. Hmm. And the reason for that is that um, after you've played for a while, you call an attendant over, and they'll take, and these actually now go down into bins, and you take the, um, they'll take those bins over to a counting machine, and they'll count the number of balls you won. And then that tells you how big your payout is. So these are kind of like tokens or uh, uh, poker chips that belong mm -hmm. to just that right. company. Exactly. So they don't want those going out. But when yeah. you cash in, you return them. Yeah, so they, they, don't, count want, them. they don't want you pocketing balls and then taking them somewhere <laughs> else and then you know, slipping them into a, in a machine. Um, and then there'll be a whole wall of prizes you can win. Oh, wow. And they all have um, uh, prices uh, based on the number of balls. So here's a 40-ball item, a 300-ball item, and so forth and so on. Oh, wow. Anything from candy up to Chanel to nice bags, yeah, purses. Get my designer Fendi exactly. wear. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Or you could get the special prize. The special prize? Yeah. What's the special prize? <laughs> Plastic box. What's so special about a plastic box? Well, you can take it across the street and hand it in to a little counter where they'll pay you out money. They'll pay me money for a box that I want it across the street? Yeah, they will, which is very nice because then it means you can play this and then make money off of it. That, 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 that sounds kind of like gambling. It does, but fortunately, um, that counter across the street isn't actually part of the establishment that you're doing this at. So it's not actually technically part of the same company, even though it's usually owned by the same company that owns the pachinko parlor, but they're not exactly the same. I mean, I had to cross the street. It must be a different exactly. company, even if the parent company is the same. Mm -hmm. Again, that kind of sounds a little bit like gambling. It sounds a little bit like gambling, exactly. Yeah. Um, so this is the, the weird thing about pachinko over in Japan, is that there is this sort of gray area around pachinko machines where they are used for gambling, it happens all the time, 
but nobody cracks down on it because it is obeying the letter of the law, but not the spirit of it. Oh, that's pretty sneaky. Mm -hmm. uh, because it's not officially gambling, can kids go in and... Technically, play? no. Um, the Pachinko parlors are supposed to only allow folks 18 and up to play the machines. Mm -hmm. um, anyone could technically walk in. Um, but nobody really enforces that rule. So, so it's it's an unspoken sort of, okay, you're 18. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, and particular parlors aren't raided that often by the police. They aren't really watching it that closely, um, mm -hmm. unless something you know, really unsavory is happening there. Well, now, 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 this pachinko machine has a has an <laughs> ashtray in it, <laughs> sure does. Which, which I would think would qualify as something 18 or over mm -hmm. would require for smoking. It, but this is an old one when everybody used to smoke. <laughs> True. Uh, is it still that way with... Oh, yes. So maybe that's part of the 18 up. Mm, yeah. Having that... Hmm. And, you know, yes, uh, Pachinko Parlors are still one of the, the few places where smoking is allowed everywhere in the establishment. Um, so it is kind of a refuge for smokers to some extent. That helps. Uh, you probably. can sit in front of your machine and just... Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 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 and many, many, many people do. Uh, Japanese people spend about three hundred billion dollars a year on gambling. Wow, that's a that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. The average Japanese person billion with a B. Billion with a B. The average Japanese person loses loses four hundred dollars a year on gambling. My goodness, if that's the average person, you know that some people don't gamble. Mm -hmm. Other people are making up for that. Yeah. By losing a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And that's the other interesting thing, is that the risk uh, versus the reward is much narrower in Pachinko than with other games. Hmm. So you're only spending, I mean, one ball will cost about four cents. So for a buck, I could get 25 balls. Yep. Of, you know, so, mm -hmm. wow, that, uh, that means, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's not so expensive, but if you're going through balls that fast, <laughs> yeah, and this is an older machine. Yeah, oh, yeah. Are the newer machines... Yeah, the newer machines fire them out really rapidly, and in fact, you're controlling the, uh, the angle at which the balls come out. It fires at will, and mm -hmm. you just yep. steer it? Yeah, you, you just steer it. Oh, you can go through <laughs> balls really quickly you like sure that. You sure can, yeah. Um, and that's part of the appeal of Pachinko, is that there's this constant stimulation. Um, because you're only spending relatively small amounts at a time, and the, the biggest payout at a time will be about $50. Um, hmm. You're not really going to have any huge swings, but there's constant simulation of little dings and an extra ball here, an extra ball there, as opposed to a slot machine where you make it a payout every couple of minutes. Here, you're getting something changing every few seconds, potentially. Ooh. Well, well having, having that rapid of exchange, mm -hmm. I would think the... the the draw would be reward based. Oh, I won. Yeah. Oh, uh, oh, I won. Mm -hmm. It would really become very addictive to yeah. to try and stay at the machine and mm -hmm. and and play to get the payout. Right. And, it is. And then you think, oh, well, it's only a few bucks, not a problem. But how much do how much do pachinko parlors make a lot of money? I mean, well... three hundred billion dollars <laughs> of gambling in a country that doesn't allow gambling mm -hmm. is. Quite a bit of money, especially if it's only $50 payout here, $50 payout there. Well, I read one article by a guy who went to one parlor called um, uh, Yumitoya, and uh, they cash $80,000 a day. $80,000 a day? That's $25 million a year, U.S. That's a lot of balls. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Um, and, you know, these machines can't be that expensive. Yeah. Um, that's a lot of money to go to a, a single parlor. Hmm. With that kind of money throughput, it, it kind of makes one think that that would be a good way to take your money across the street and get it cleaned up, uh, possibly laundered. Possibly. <laughs> yeah, possibly. <laughs> you buy your Maybe. balls. Oh, I didn't play much. Here, I've got <laughs> balls to turn in. Here's your prize. Go and get your money. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, it's a very, very gray area. And so there have been various attempts to kind of clean it up and to do things. Uh, it's never really gone very far, hmm. uh, partly because, you know, it, it doesn't have, um, I don't know, it doesn't have those, those big payouts. You're, hmm. you're not seeing people going bankrupt overnight, so it's not as dramatic hmm. as with other uh, forms of gambling. Um, but then there's also another aspect to it, that over 90% of uh, pachinko parlors in Japan are owned by Koreans. 
Koreans. Yeah, ethnic so, Koreans. So, so that's kind of odd. You'd think it would be more proportionate mm. to uh, the folks in Japan. Mm -hmm. how, how did that come about? Well, over time, pachinko parlors became more disreputable. Um, it just wasn't as, you know, respectable to own a pachinko parlor. And Koreans were coming in, you know, migrant workers and um, just Koreans in general. And, of course, it's hard to get a job when you first enter a com country. Uh, if, if you can't get the reputable job, you need a job that pays. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to do this other job. Perfect opportunity. Yep. Jump in. Do the job. Yeah. So uh, they all started to, to really take over. And, again, it was, at, at the time, it was a very reasonable thing where, okay, great, you want, you want to do it. But then that's added a whole racial element to the whole question. Oh, wow. Any attempt to legislate this is seen as an attempt to... Oh, be anti-Korean. Anti yeah. Oh, so there's some trickiness to getting things to, to, to shift. Mm -hmm. Now, it is a really fun game to play, mm -hmm. um, it, but we haven't seen as much of it in, in pop culture as, uh, uh, for example, in anime mm -hmm. as... Uh, some of the other uh, aspects of Japanese culture, right? B but they have made references to things. Well, that's the thing, you know. How often in anime have you heard about an uncle or somebody who had gambling debts? Uh, quite a bit, and mm -hmm. I always wonder, well, what is he playing? <laughs> <laughs> how's he, how's he get these debts? It's probably not poker. It's probably <laughs> this. You know, um, it, it's a great example of something where. Um, it's again, it's a little disreputable. It's something folks don't really want to talk about too much. But if everyone's losing four hundred dollars a year on this, mm, can, somebody's making up for the mm, people who aren't. <laughs> yeah. So you see that a lot. Um, but you also see things like there are anime about pachinko. Um, there's one called um, Pachislo Kizoku Gin, which is a twenty-three episode anime series made in two thousand one about a guy who writes for a pachinko magazine. <laughs> a pachinko magazine. <laughs> It's got to find where there's a magazine somewhere for every yeah. hobby. Uh, he writes for a pachinko mm -hmm. magazine. Yeah. Um, and a whole anime based on this. Whole anime based on it. You can check it out. It, it's out <laughs> there. Um, yeah, it, it, com it comes across occasionally. I know Witch Hunter Robin has some references mm -hmm. to pachinko machines. There's some characters in pachinko parlors. Uh, and and uh, it's there in other, other places. But part of the reason there, too, is... Imagine trying to animate a scene in a pachinko parlor. Oh, the, the, the pa pachinko parlors are so, there's so much going on and all the action and motion of all the balls and all the mm -hmm. bells and lights. And I mean, it's arcade on steroids practically. Yeah. And trying to draw that out would take a lot of time and effort. Mm -hmm. And the payout of having just a short scene in that, it might be easier just to show the front of the parlor and maybe yeah. somebody passing mm -hmm. one or two machines mm -hmm. with blurred background. <laughs> Yeah, and the other side of the coin, too, is that so much anime is aimed at a younger audience. Hmm. If you're aiming your show at 14, 15-year-olds... They're not supposed to be in an 18-year-old establishment. Somebody would get upset. Mm -hmm. They're marketing this to our kids. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and especially if it's so easy for a, a teenager to get into one of these places, probably best to leave it vague. Uh, but as, as, as a more ma mature person over 18... Mm -hmm. It is a it is a very fun game, it is. and uh, if I had you know twenty bucks to blow <laughs> it, it it might be fun to uh, give it a try. And that's a great point. Uh, you know, uh, understand if you're in Japan, understand pachinko is not illegal. You can abs anyone could absolutely walk into one of those uh, parlors, especially if you're over eighteen, um, and play. But I wouldn't p play for the special prizes. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I set my money limit. And <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just play for fun. The experience. Uh, yeah, I played pachinko. <laughs> mm -hmm, exactly. <laughs> It'd be a lot of, a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. So, uh, thank you for joining us for this episode of Culture Shock. Join us and check out our other videos on geekarchaeologists.com. Google it.